Google Compute Engine is the infrastructure as a service component that is IaaS component of Google Cloud Platform, which is built on the global infrastructure that runs Google's search engine, Gmail, YouTube, and other big services. Hello everyone, this is Dhruv from Edureka, and I welcome you all to this session where I will be talking about Google Cloud's Compute Engine. So without any further ado, let's take a look at today's agenda. We will start this session by first having an overview of Google Cloud Platform and then we will understand what infrastructure as a service is. After that, we will get an overview of Google Cloud's Compute Engine as well as its applications, features and advantages. And then finally, we will try our hands on Compute Engine. Before we begin, do consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated on trending technologies. And also, if you are interested in online training certification in Google Cloud Platform, check out the link given in the description box below. So first, let's get an overview of the platform on which the Compute Engine runs, that is Google Cloud Platform. Offered by Google, it is a suite of cloud computing services that runs on the same infrastructure that Google uses internally for its end-user products, such as Google Search, Gmail, File Storage, and YouTube. Along with a set of management tools, it provides a series of modular cloud services, including computing, data storage, data analytics, and machine learning. For organizations with large amounts of data to store or analyze, Google Cloud Storage prices are up to 20% cheaper than AWS. If you know AWS, AWS is Amazon Web Services, which is the largest cloud service provider in the world, and still GCP is cheaper than AWS. While there is no difference in the price of container services, Google Cloud is an industry leader in the field and is also investing heavily in AI and machine learning technologies. Okay, and many small and large enterprises are increasingly adopting Google Cloud Platform, which boards well since it disengages things and makes them more secure at reasonable cost. Now that we have understood what Google Cloud Platform is, and as I told you initially, that Google Compute Engine is an infrastructure as a service component of Google Cloud Platform. So now let's first understand what infrastructure as a service, that is IaaS, is. So infrastructure as a service are online services that provide high-level APIs which are used to de-reference various low-level details of underlying network infrastructure like physical computing, resources, location, data partitioning, scaling, security, backup, etc. A hypervisor, which is nothing but a physical host such as Zen, Oracle, VirtualBox, Oracle VM, KVM, or VMware runs the virtual machines as guests. So pools of hypervisors within the cloud operational system can support large number of virtual machines and the ability to scale services up and down according to customers' varying requirements. Typically, IaaS involves the use of cloud orchestration technology like OpenStack, Apache, CloudStack, or OpenNebula. This manages the creation of a virtual machine and decides on which hypervisor to start it, which enables virtual machine migration features between hosts. Also, it allocates storage volumes and attaches them to virtual machines and track usage information for billing and more. Now let's get an overview of Google Cloud's Compute Engine. So Google's Compute Engine is Google's infrastructure as a service virtual machine offering. It allows customers to use virtual machines in the cloud as server resources instead of acquiring and managing server hardware. Google's Compute Engine offers virtual machines running in Google's data centers connected to the worldwide fiber network. The tooling and workflow offered by the Compute Engine enables scaling from single instances to global. Google Compute Engine enables users to launch virtual machines on demand. Virtual machines can be launched from the standard images or custom images created by users. The Google Compute Engine users must authenticate based on Auth 2.0 before launching the virtual machines. So what Auth 2.0 here is? So if you see, Auth is an open standard for access delegation, commonly used as a way for internet users to grant websites or applications access to their information on other websites but without giving them the passwords. The mechanism is used by companies such as Amazon, Google, Facebook, Microsoft, Twitter to permit users to share information about their accounts with third-party applications or websites. Now, going back to Google Compute Engine, which can be accessed via the developer console or RESTful API or command line interface. Now, let's have a look at some of its applications. So, first one is a virtual machine migration to Compute Engine. So, what it do is, as you can see in the diagram also, how it works. So it provides tools to fast track the migration process from on-premise or other clouds to Google Cloud Platform. If a user like is starting with the public cloud, then they can leverage these tools to seamlessly transfer existing applications from their data center or AWS or Azure to Google Cloud Platform. Users can then have their applications running on Compute Engine within minutes while the data migrates transparently in the background. That's how virtual machine migration works. 
then we have genomics data processing as you can see in the chart that how it works so processing genomic data is like computationally intensive process because the information is uh, enormous with the vast sets of sequencing so with the compute engine's potentials users can process such large data sets so what it do is uh, it processes petabytes of genomic data in seconds with compute engine and high performance computing sense solution so google cloud's engines scalable and flexible infrastructure enables research to continue without disruptions okay also uh, like it like competitive pricing and discounts help you stay within the budget to convert ideas into discoveries or hypothesis into cures and also like inspirations into products then we have uh, byol also known as bring your own license images so in this how the normal host and then we have a sole tenant node you can see how this chart is given for its working so what it do is a compute engine can like uh, help you run windows apps and uh, google cloud platform by bringing their licenses to the platform as uh, either licensing to the images or sole tenant images as shown so after you migrate to google cloud optimize or modernize your license usage to achieve your business goals take advantage of the many benefits available to virtual machine instances such as reliable storage options the speed of the google network and also like auto scaling now let's look at some of the key features of google compute engine the first is machine types it describes the virtual hardware that is uh, attached to an instance which also includes ram and cpus there are like two types of machines first is a predefined and second is a custom machine types so predefined machine types are like there are pre configured virtual machine templates that can be used to set up the virtual machines the configurations have been pre optimized by google and like meet most of the requirements so the predefined machine types are further divided into four subcategories so they are like standard virtual machines which are like balanced between processing power and memory and then we have high memory virtual machines in this like emphasis is put on memory over processing power for tasks that needed accessible non disk storage quickly then we have high cpu virtual machines so high cpu usage for like high intensity applications that require processing over memory then the fourth subcategory that is a shared co virtual machines so if you see a single virtual cpu backed by a physical cpu that can run for a period of time these machines are like not for use cases that require an ongoing server or significant power so the second main category under uh, machine types is a uh, custom machine types in this the virtual machine can be configured manually for a compute engine virtual machine instance so users can like select the number of uh, cpus and memory provided they are within google's set limits so the second one is a uh, local ssd so google compute engine offers always encrypted local solid state drive block storage which is uh, physically attached to the virtual machine running it it improves performance and also like reduces latency now the third one is persistent disk so these are durable high performance block storage for virtual machine instances which can be created in hard disk or ssd formats so users can take snapshots and create a new persistent disk from the snapshot if a virtual machine instance is terminated the data is retained by the persistent disk which can be attached to another instance there are two types of persistent disk first is shared second is ssd then we have gpu accelerator so gpus are added to accelerate computationally intensive workloads like machine learning or virtual workstation applications etc also the fifth one is images so an image contains the operating system of the root file system that uses leverage to run virtual machine instance so google cloud platform provides two main types of images first one is public image and second is custom images so public images are like collection of open source and uh, proprietary options this is the starting point for most virtual machine instances and come packaged with only the operating system the second one is the custom images so public images if you see are a good starting point but they are designed to be built upon and turned into custom images to match the needs of the customers custom image has the software needed along with all the scripts necessary for the instance to work automatically without administrator in intervention these are automatically brought up and shut down for load balancing or recovery needs so the last one is global load balancing so it helps in distributing incoming requests across pools of instances across multiple regions so that users can achieve maximum performance throughput and availability at a cost similarly there are many other features like uh, linux and windows support container reservations os uh, patch management live migration for virtual machines and many more google compute engine has many pros such as the improved output like success like smooth integration with other google services and few cons as a uh, like most components are based on proprietary technologies and the choice of programming languages is limited so uh, now that you know the applications and uh, features of google compute engine let's now look at some major advantages of it okay so the first is storage efficiency so the persistent is support up to 257 terabyte of storage which is uh, more than 10 times higher than what amazon elastic block storage can accommodate 
the organizations that require more scalable storage options can go for compute engine then we have uh, costs as it is cost effective so within the gcp ecosystem you just pay only for the computing time that have consumed so the per second billing plan is what used by the google compute engine then we have stability google compute engine offers uh, stable services because of its ability to provide live migration virtual machines between the hosts also google cloud platform has a robust and uh, inbuilt and redundant backup system so the compute engine uses this uh, system for flagship products like search engine and gmail also coming to security so google compute engine is a more secure and safe place for cloud applications so now that you have a theoretical understanding of google compute engine let's practically try our hands on it so you can just directly go to google cloud platform just open it first let's go to the documents part so in this also you can open the console also this one this tab only we can open okay so for support purpose you can just go through this documentation part though i am going to explain you still if you need any support you can uh, go to this compute part and uh, here the compute engine is given from here you can like much more understanding of google compute engine so let's come back here we have opened the console this is how the google cloud platform dashboard looks like you can either go from here to compute engine from here we can open or you can just uh, search here compute engine okay so these are the virtual machine instance templates so these are different kind of virtual machines are given then we also have storage under that we have just a minute we have this snapshots or images as i have told you like there are built in images also and they are like custom images also so here is the disk these are the disks which been already been created and uh, then we also have snapshots one of the snapshot is also there so then we have images so these are the built in images you can use any of them or if you want to make a, your own custom type images you can create image from here okay now let's finally go to virtual machine instances and let's see how we can launch an instance so these are the two instances which i have already created so let's go and create a new one okay so you can name your instance here and here whatever configurations you are going to give now the price will change okay like i can show you just for showing purpose i am just showing you if you change it to four virtual cpus See, the price has changed right and again go to the small one okay so you can also add label here and give it a e environment then give uh, testing okay or you can add much more label than uh, okay you can add more labels like app or you can give the value for it like app okay you have to do that and then you can like save it okay then we have like see i am changing the configuration that's why the price is changing okay and then we have to see the region also under that region and zone you have to select and under that we have different services okay like right now the under this these services are there general purpose compute optimized memory optimized and gpu okay like uh, you can see in this e2 series we have for general purpose we have series and we have machine types of uh, four cpus and eight gb memory and all this like that then we also have uh, compute optimized also under this uh, we have uh, Four CPU, sixteen GB, and then eight CPUs. We have thirty-two gig. For sixteen CPUs, we have sixty-four gig. These kinds of CPUs and memory is given. And if you come to memory optimized, these are the large ones. They are the ultra level ones. So there are like ninety-six CPUs and one four point TB of memory. Also forty CPUs and nine sixty one GB memory. And then we also have GPUs for it for different machine types. We have these kind of GPU for twenty-four virtual CPUs, one seventy GB memory, and this weight is given. But remember that you don't get it in every region and zone. Like I can show you uh, right now, it is selected as US Central One and US Central One A, right? And if we change it to Europe West, okay? Let's see if we change it to Europe West. See now you can see GPU is already gone. If we see for C1, now even the memory optimized is also gone. So that's how it works, okay? So let's go to the default one only, which V1, yeah, okay? Then we have. Uh, Boot disk also you can change this uh, boot disk also like you can go to change you can like, select a public image or anything for a different one you can use this and then press O7 okay let's go do it 50 also we can do that and then we can select it okay or we can go to custom images if you want to use any custom image of yours you can use it here if you have any snapshots taken you can also use snapshots here also if you have an existing disk or a, like if you have made some existing disk from a previous virtual machine then you can use it but right now we don't have one also i have shown this so you can select it here okay you can change it again you can just go to debian only okay linux is selected balance persistent disk or ssd persistent disk, which one you can select give it 10 only 
everything is selected this is the depositing we have done again and then you can come to this management security disk network household tendency and just select it let's come to the networking part if you already have a network tag or something you can select it here also you can change the host name or whatever host name you have created you can give a different one also okay and then we have disks it's like if you have creating a virtual machine you can if you delete a virtual machine also you can retain your disk also there is an option here delete boot disk when instance is deleted so you can just deselect it so if a virtual machine is deleted then also a disk will be like retained so again doing it so let's create it Well, I think there is a problem. There is some problem. Create virtual machine instance and its boot disk instance. Yeah, okay, they don't support. What you can do is uh, this is something. There are certain limitations of I want to say for free trial because this is a free trial. Okay, so you can buy one or you can, there are certain limitations. You have to follow those limitations. So you can like simply create a default one with default settings. You can like right now I'm not doing any customizations and everything. So you can just create that for now. So it will uh, take a few time because I've changed some settings now. That's why it wasn't able to run. And uh, there are certain limitations. I hope you understand. Yeah, now it's been created. Also, let me tell you this. Like, suppose if you have created this instance and you have working on it, you have created this on server. We have created this virtual machine, I mean, and you're working on it for a long time. You work and then suppose a teammate comes and he sees that and he feels like, okay, this is a lot of mess up. So he deletes the instance. Now what happens is it will be like, oh, your work is gone. All the work you have done is gone. But what you can do is, or you can go to disk only. Okay, so this is the instance too. What you can do is you can create a snapshot from here. Okay, or you can just, uh, uh, snapshot is created, it will be created here, okay? Like another snapshot is here, for instance one. If you create it for instance two, it will be created here itself. So while creating the instance, what you can do is, if you have taken the snapshot, Okay, so what you can do is from here, you can change it and you can go and select a snapshot from here. Okay, like right now, snapshot is given now. For instance, when it is given, if you use it, all your work will be retained. So that's how it works. Also, you can like, if you want to delete an instance, you can just uh, go here and delete the instance from here. It will take a few seconds. Yeah, the instance got deleted. I hope you have understood now. This is the basic demo. With this, we come to an end of today's session of Google Compute Engine. I hope you had a great time learning and understanding about it. And if you have any queries, leave them down in the comment section below. Until next time, thank you. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it, and you can comment any of your doubts and queries, and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!